Okay, good afternoon, good evening from Zoo Atlanta. Today we are so excited to be joining up with the animalists to talk all things sloths and to celebrate Sloth Week. You can catch up on some previous footage on the Animalist and get more into the wonderful world of sloths. Today we are so excited to be joining um, us from the sloth habitat with two of our keepers and they're going to introduce us to our sloths. Um, our keeper three, Lynn Yakubinas, is in charge of several programs with sloths. She manages the species survival plan, which kind of is a matchmaking for sloths. And then she also manages the stud book, which is kind of a family tree for sloths. Behind her feeding right now, that's Coco, is our keeper, Michelle Dabe. Lynn, um, how's it going down there? Hey, it's going really well. Um, we've Coco actually woke up a little bit for us, and he's eating some of his vegetables. So hopefully he'll stick around. Well, we are ready to be taking questions. We already have a few from the Animalist YouTube page and from Twitter. You can use the hashtag Sloth Week, and you can also use the Q&A app here on Google+. It's right there in the corner through the event page. So, Lynn, can you just introduce us to, to Coco and, and talk about the other sloths on the exhibit with him? Sure, this is Coco. Um, he came to us about a year ago from a zoo in California um, named the Charles Paddock Zoo. And he had never really been paired with females before. Um, and so this was his first chance to meet some girls and they've gotten along really well. We also have Okra. Um, she came to us from the Houston Zoo. Um, she's our largest sloth. Um, she weighs about 12 to 13 kigs. Um, and then we have Bonnie um, who is our youngest sloth um, at a 14 years old and she's also our smallest sloth and we've had her the longest though she's been here um, since early 2000, um, 2002 so we've had her for quite a while um, so a lot of people here know her really well. Well to get started uh, what kind of food are you guys feeding Coco and what do sloths normally eat in the wild? Right now he's eating some yellow squash and some sweet potatoes. Um, we're also giving him some lettuce and some corn. And then they also get a red biscuit that has all their vitamins and nutrients in it. It looks kind of like dry dog food. Um, and they really enjoy that as well. Um, in the wild they eat more um, leaves and fruits that they would find around, some flowers if they find them. Um, but they, they kind of um, will eat whatever vegetation they can find. And so we'll also provide them with some willow or banana leaves here as well um, that they like to eat. And um, we have a question here from the Q&A app. It is, why do sloths like to hang around in trees so much? Mainly that keeps them safe. Um, when they're on the ground, they're um, a lot more likely to get eaten or attacked. And so if they're up in the trees and staying really still, very little um, creatures can find them. And sloths are actually nocturnal. So they're only awake at night. So a lot of um, the things that will eat them are awake during the day. So they kind of hide out all day. And then at night, they're moving around a little bit more. But that's mainly why they stay up in the trees. Um, and kind of going off that, we have a question from Lily from Santa Fe, New Mexico. What kind of animals prey on sloths? And what other threats do they face in the wild? Um, the main predators are like birds of prey and then snakes can get the infants and then also felines like jaguars or ocelots um, that are found in their native countries um, can prey on sloths. But um, unfortunately right now their biggest threat is due to humans. Um, a lot of roads are built through the forest where they live and so in order to get from tree to tree they have to cross a road. And so unfortunately you, as you can imagine sometimes a car will hit them. So um, it's a very... Um, uh, it's not a very natural threat, but unfortunately getting hit by cars um, is a major concern for them. And then also to a sloth, a power line and a power line pole look just like a tree. So unfortunately they'll try to climb the power line pole and then get burned um, as they try to cross the wire as well. So um, unfortunately um, human influence is what is their biggest threat right now. And I, I know you were just in Costa Rica at the Sloth Sanctuary. Um, did you see anything down there that was, I mean, that's kind of heaven for some of us. <laughs> crazy about Sloth Lake right now. Uh, what did you see down there that you thought was really cool about conservation or what they're doing out there? Um, they're really big into um, rescuing sloths that are brought to them either from the pet trade. Unfortunately, the babies are adorable, and so people want them as pets. And so they're, um, they're stolen from their mother sometimes. Um, 
And so the sanctuary takes on those orphans and tries to rehabilitate them and is learning how to re-release them in the wild. And then also the sloths that do get burned or hit by cars, the sanctuary has a vet on duty that will um, take care of them. And then when they're ready, they can um, release them back into the wild as well. So the sanctuary is doing a lot of work to try to um, take care of the sloths and then try to reintroduce them into protected forests. And it, just to kind of give us an overview, because someone else, um, we have Mary Ann from Albany, New York, asked about where they live. There's two-toed and three-toed. Um, where are their ranges? Where do they live? Um, the two-toed the two are more um, towards the northern um, part of Central Amer of South America, and then the Three toads are a little bit more southern, but their um, ranges do overlap. And actually, in Costa Rica, you can find both two-toed and three-toed. Um, in zoos in North America, unless you go to the Dallas World Aquarium, you're always going to see a two-toed sloth. Um, almost all the sloths in North America in zoos are two-toed sloths. And as I mentioned, the Dallas World Aquarium is the only institution that has three-toed sloths. And that's mainly because the three toads are very difficult to keep in captivity. They only eat like one or two types of leaves. And so you have to get those leaves brought in if you're not able to grow them yourself. Whereas I mentioned the two toad sloths eat a wide variety of diets. It's easy to find sweet potatoes um, and the Marion leaf eater biscuits for zoos to be able to take care of that. Cool. Um, I, one of the questions that I know we were talking about this earlier is, all the, the the interesting ecosystem that lives in a sloth, and then we have a question about um, Roberta from Dallas said, "I heard there are moths that live in their fur. Are there any moths that live in these sloths? So can you yeah. kind of go into maybe um, it, does Coco have any moths? I don't. I just saw him. I don't think he had any moths at the time. But kind of go into what kind of bugs call a sloth home." Um, in the wild, there is such a thing as, um, it's referred to as a sloth moth, and it does live in their fur. It's more found in the three-toed sloths, um, and one reason is the three-toed sloths actually have a tail. And so when they come to the ground once a week to defecate, they actually dig a hole. And so what the moths do, um, uh-oh, um, what the moths do is, um, hang on just a second. Uh-oh. We're having some technical... There's. Uh oh. Um. Hang on. Um. But anyway, I can keep talking. Um. What the sloths, what the moths do is they'll come down to the ground while the sloths defecate and lay their eggs on the feces, and then the sloth uses its tail to cover up the hole, and so then the sloth, the moth is able to incubate the um its eggs on the feces, and it gives them a nice little environment to grow up in until the moth's eggs are ready to hatch. Um, and then also the sloths have a lot of um, algae and stuff in their fur as well that helps camouflage them and the moths will eat the algae. So they have a food source and they kind of just um, live on the sloths um, and kind of have a, a little symbiotic relationship there. Okay. Well then, uh, I don't know what <laughs> happened to our stream, but I'm going to keep going and maybe you can answer some questions. Sure. Um, We're still here. We're still oh, here. And we Bonnie, just... Bonnie's on her way over, so. Oh, good. Um, you can give her the corn. Maybe just let the people over there know what's up and we can try and get that. Yeah, through. they're working on it. Okay, great. Um, can you kind of talk about how their, their claws help them eat, if that does help them eat? Sure. Um, their claws are actually curved, and they, it helps them um, pick up different leaves on in the in the wild. It would help them like grasp onto the leaves in the trees in order to um, pull them off the branches, and then also they use their mouth as well. Um, and I've also seen sloths dip their claws in water and then drink off of the water off the the water off their claws, kind of like a little cup. So um, they do that as well. They'll also use their claws to drink water. Okay. Wow. That's really cool, actually. Yeah. Because um, we're speaking of Bonnie, and I... Oh! Here we oh. are. There we are. Does that work? Okay. Um, oh, you're you back. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, good. Bonnie's almost here. Luckily, I had some photos to go through. So can you introduce Bonnie? Um, I have a photo of her we can put up, and you can kind of talk about her. She's been here the longest, and you probably know the most about her personality. Yes. Bonnie is actually our most active sloth, um, and so I'm pretty excited she's coming over. Um, she loves to train, actually, um, and she really likes um, keeper interaction, um, especially when it rains. She'll kind of get up off her shelf and come on over. Um, she loves to, like, 
lean down and try to sniff us and stuff like that. Um, but with training, she's trained to target, um, and I'm working on getting her to sit on a scale and go into a crate, but she really, really enjoys targeting. Um, and let me try to scan the computer really slowly so you guys can see her. She's eating some corn, and then I'll move it back. You guys see her over there? That's Bonnie, um, and as I mentioned, she's our youngest sloth. Um, she's 14 years old. She's actually our smallest. She only weighs about six kilograms, um, so she's she's our smallest, and she has a very pointy face. You can kind of see it there. Um, when I move back, you can see Coco and kind of see the differences in their faces, but um, her face is a lot more pointy. Um, and she's if you ever if you ever see a sloth awake during the day, it's normally Bonnie. She really likes to interact, and she'll come over, um, even if there's not food available. Sometimes she'll just come over and check things out. <laughs> Someone asked if, if they have a, if Coco has a favorite food. He's 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 really showing off behind you right now. <laughs> yeah, Coco loves vegetables. Um, Mainly, he's, he likes the yellow squash and the sweet potato, which he's eating now. Um, Bonnie actually really, of course, she likes corn, as you just saw, but she really prefers fruits. Um, some grapes and apples and um, some tomatoes are her favorite. So they each have preferences, um, but they all they get the same diet, but you could definitely tell preferences as we hand feed them. Um, we have a really interesting question, and I feel like it's something we, we hear a lot about at zoos, uh, but because we keep them. But Jennifer from Fort Wayne, Indiana asked, would a sloth make a good pet? Um, sloths do not make good pets. And um, mainly they are very difficult to take care of. Um, it's not like a dog where it wags its tail if it's happy. And um, you can kind of tell by its ears if it's not doing well. Sloths are very, very subtle in everything they do. So it's very, you have to study them for a really long time and get to know what's normal and what's not normal. And then also you can kind of see they don't like to be petted. They don't want to be touched. They're not coming over for scratches or um, for interaction. And when I mentioned interaction before, pretty much it's just coming over and looking at us. So sloths don't really want to interact like your dog or cat at home. Um, so they don't really make good pets and they don't do a whole lot during the day. So there's not much to do with them. Um, but they're just very difficult to take care of, and zoos have studied them for years and years and years to figure out the right ways, and um, it, it's very difficult, um, as we have learned. So. so going back into, I guess, their behaviors, when you can figure out they like something or when they don't like something, um, I've always read that sloths have not the best sensory experience. They can't see well, they can't hear well, things like that. Um, but Jeff from Los Angeles, California asks, do adult sloths make any sounds? Actually, um, yes, they do make some sounds. Um, Coco's our most vocal sloth that we have, and mainly he like blows air out of his nose to get attention. So it, you can kind of hear him. And then the other noises they make are just kind of um, in, a, in aggressive instances. Um, like if um, they both want the same shelf or something and they're trying to move past each other, they'll hiss at each other. It kind of sounds like a cat but they'll kind of hiss at each other. Um, and you mentioned the sensory experiences. They, d they can see, but not as well as a lot of other mammals, but they can smell extremely well. And so that's how they communicate a lot, is through smell. Um, they'll scent mark things, and then the others will come and um, smell them, and then they know which sloth has been in which location. And then that's how we know if they like something or not. We'll let them smell the food, and if they turn their nose or close their mouth, we know they don't want it. And if it's something that they do like, then um, they'll open their mouth after they smell it. So the sloths mainly, their main sense that they use mostly is smell. Interesting. Um, and we have a question about how long are, do they live in captivity versus the wild? In the wild, they live about 20, 25 years. In zoos, they live closer um, 30 to 40 years. Um, the oldest sloth in captivity was in her 40s. Um, unfortunately, she just passed away, but so they can live up to their 40s. That's very cool. Yes. Oh, here we have. Um, okay. Do sloths bite? What is their defense mechanism? And that question. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, they can bite, and a lot of people are like, oh, be careful of the claws, their claws are going to hurt you. But ac actually what they do is they use their very strong forelimbs with their claws and pull their, pull you or whatever they're trying to bite to their mouth. So their teeth are very, very sharp, and they actually never stop growing. 
Um, they're kind of like rodents in that way where they have to work them down by chewing on other things in order to um, wear the teeth down so they never get too long. But um, so they're, especially their canines, I don't know if Coco will open his mouth so you can see, but they have very, very sharp canines. And that's mainly, um, that's their main defense mechanism, but they'll use them in the wild because the leaves are a lot tougher and the bark and everything. Um, but they do, um, they, that's their main defense mechanism is um, with their teeth. But their actual, their main defense mechanism is avoidance. And that's just, like I mentioned before, hiding in the trees with algae on you. No one sees you. So that's your best defense mechanism. One question kind of on the lines of that um, that I've gotten a few times since we, we posted this on our Google Plus pages, how fast can they move? I think they get a bad rap by being called sloth. You know, sloth was a bad, bad rap for them. But how fast can these guys move? I'm not sure of an actual like miles per hour, but they can move very fast. Um, either if they want something, um, they can move fast, or if they're avoiding something, they can move very fast. Um, but I've seen them, um, especially during the rain. Um, I mentioned it before, but they will. They're pretty active in the rain, and so when it's raining, you can see Bonnie especially all over this exhibit, and she's moving quite fast. And that's something um, the public here has commented on about how they've never realized sloths can actually move that fast. And just a reminder to the public, uh, thanks to Animal Planet Live, you can watch these sloths 24-7 on sloth cam. So uh, at night, when the zoo is closed, you can still <laughs> check out these guys and, and what they're up to. Yes. I think one of the other things that we always hit on a lot is, is, is you were talking about how they like the rain and how they, um, maybe can you go into the algae in their hair and all those really neat adaptations sloths have from living in the rainforest. Sure. Um, in the wild, they do have uh, an algae that grows on them, and the algae gets um, food off of the sloths to eat, like their dander and their um, dust mites and stuff that may naturally grow on the sloth or be on the sloth. So the algae gets food, and then the sloth gets protection because the algae helps them blend into the forest. They look like a green blob in the wild. Um, and also, sloths are pretty unique in that their hair grows backwards. It grows from their stomach to their back, where pretty much every other mammal that your hair grows from your back to your stomach and the reason is um, you can see with Coco if he was just like that and the rain hit him the rain's going to hit his stomach first and so you want the rain to roll off of the stomach and then hit the back and then this is called a rain spout this, every little sloth has this little um, tuft of hair on their back and that's to help the water run off of them even better and then um, it just since it is wet all the time where they naturally live that kind of helps the water run off of them to help them keep a little bit more dry. And, and since you've seen sloths in the wild, um, I can answer this question. Um, mm -hmm. Diana asked, I know sloths love to swim to yours. Um, can you kind of get into that? About, do they love to swim? Um, ours do not like to swim. Um, we have provided them with swimming opportunities with baby pools or whatever, and they've chosen not to use them. And one thing they've recently discovered is that it's mainly the three-toed sloths that prefer swimming more. There are some two-toed sloths that do swim, but it seems to be a more general characterization of the three-toed sloths. But we have given ours the opportunity, and they've chosen not to swim. Cool. Um, oh, goodness. Where did this question go? Pardon me. Oh, so before you had mentioned Bonnie was light. Um, can, and, and Blue Paw 89 asks, how heavy can they get? Um, with ochre being at 12 to 13 kigs, that's quite heavy. Um, that's probably the heaviest I've, um, probably more, no more than 15 kigs is what I've seen with other zoos and stuff. But um, so yeah, normally an average sloth is usually like six to nine kigs. And that's kilograms, right? Yes, kilograms. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Someone yeah. just asked cakes. <laughs> oh, sorry, kilograms. You can convert that into pounds if you like. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's zoo talk for you. There you oh. go, yep. And I just thought someone asked how much is that in pandas because clearly I have pandas on my brain. We will, we will do the kilogram to pound later and, and let you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> that's your homework for tonight. <laughs> There's a lot of great calculators online. Um, <laughs> and I guess um, their fur, what does it feel like? It's actually kind of coarse. Um, 
It's kind of like I compare it to a terrier dog's fur, where it's kind of coarse, but not like a harsh coarseness. And again, that's for the rain runoff. You really want, um, you don't want it to be soft and absorb the water. You want it to be a little bit rough so the rain runs right off of it. Very cool. Very interesting. Um, well, we have a few more questions. People okay. really want to know about their personalities. Okay. Um, I know Coco has been really active right now. When I saw him yesterday, he was quickly inside. When he didn't, he didn't want anything <laughs> to do with me, testing a hangout in there. Can you kind of go into what makes Coco tick, Okra May, and Bonnie? Sure. Um, Coco is actually our, our most food-motivated sloth. Um, he has learned that when we come through the keeper door, it usually means we have food. So he'll get up and come over just for the food. Um, but he doesn't really like to interact with us very much. Um, he'll eat his food and leave. Um, where Bonnie will kind of like hang out and sniff a lot. She just kind of sniffs the air and everything and kind of sees what we've been up to. And then there's a reason you haven't seen okra because okra doesn't move very much at all during the day. Um, one of the nice things about the sloth cam is I've actually at um, from home at night seen her move around at night since they're nocturnal. So it's proof that she does move, but she, right now <laughs> she's just sitting in her box and that that pretty much sums up okra. She just kind of sits on her shelf um, during the day, and that's all she does. But we have noticed um, in the wild, sloths are solitary. They don't live together, although they have seen um, female sloths live together in the same trees. But what we've noticed is that it appears in our in this relationship that okra is dominant over Bonnie. And so if okra is in a spot, Bonnie may come over and try to sit on the shelf, and Ochre will be like, no, and so Bonnie will just leave. Um, and then if Bonnie's in a spot, if Ochre comes over, Bonnie will get up and move. So that kind of shows us that Ochre kind of gets to do what Ochre wants to do. And so she, we kind of call that dominance. It's not a social system like you'd see in gorillas, but for these guys, it's as social as they get. Um, and so in the wild, the males kind of are on their own, and so... Um, in zoos, you won't find multi-males together. Um, it's usually one male and several females because the males really do not get along. But we've seen the females do get along a little bit. Um, but but Bonnie's, I, I always like to say Bonnie's like the most social of our sloths, um, even though that's not very social. But she's always um, kind of looking to the keepers and stuff to um, and the other sloths. She's always kind of like going up to the other ones and kind of nudging them to see what she can do. Oh, so speaking of male and female, can you kind of get into reproduction? Um, they do everything hanging upside down. Um, and not to get too specific, but what they do is the female will um, scent mark, and then the male will come up behind her and smell the branch that she scent marked, and then they'll do it hanging in the trees. Um, and and hinging, off, hinging off that, um, how long is gestation? and a common question I always get is, can they give birth to multiple babies? Um, the Hoffman's two-toed sloths, which are what we have, their gestation is about 11 to 12 months. So it's almost a complete year um, from when they copulate to when they give birth. And it's very, very rare for them to have twins. Um, normally, they just have one infant at a time. It has happened where they've had twins, but usually both don't survive. Um, but normally it's one birth at a time every 11 to 12 months. So you can kind of see another reason why um, they need to, we need conservation is it's a very, they're a very slow growing population. So um, it takes a long time for one female to have several uh, offspring. It'll take a couple of years. Um, we've, we've had a lot of interesting questions uh, that I think you're going to really enjoy. Um, since I was just in there and I was not threatened the least, we have a question from Seth from McLean, Virginia. Can sloths kill people? Um, I'm, I've never heard of it happening. Um, I'm not going to say it can't happen, but I've never heard of it happening. I would think the person would have to be... Um, injured in some other way first before the sloth, sloth happened upon them. But sloths are vegetarian, so they're not going to try to attack people. But I've never heard of it happening. <laughs> I kind of thought that would be your answer. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, someone, I thought this was kind of nice. Uh, what is a treat for a sloth? What kind of enrichment would you give them? Um, as I mentioned before, they really like, um, they communicate with scents. So one of the main things we do is to change the scents up in their exhibit. So we'll spray peppermint um, 
essence all over the exhibit or cinnamon or almond or vanilla, different scents. And then we also provide them with different kinds of non-toxic plants that they like to eat. Um, Bonnie's absolute favorite plant is uh, mulberry. And so we'll provide her with mulberry leaves and she'll, um, she really enjoys them or she'll eat elm leaves when they're brand new leaves. Um, and then also just different foods that they don't normally get in their diet, like the corn she's eating now. You can kind of see how much she enjoys it. Um, it's one of the items they don't get every day, but she'll get every once in a while as a treat. So kind of different foods and scents and then different kinds of plants and stuff. And I, I was talking the other day to a fellow sloth fan here at the zoo, and we do talk about this, and uh, they were mentioning the metabolic rate. So is what they eat, does that affect how slow or fast they go? They actually, um, it takes them several days um, to almost a week to process foods. Um, and so it, that takes a lot of energy. And so that's kind of why they don't do a lot else, because it takes all their energy to metabolize their food. But that's one reason they only defecate about once a week. Um, there's some individual differences. Um, when we first got okra, she defecated once every two weeks. Um, and so that's totally normal. Um, it's an individual basis. So pretty much it takes them that long to process their food. So the corn she's eating now, she'll, it'll take her like a week to metabolize it. Um, so they, the food doesn't really affect their metabolism, but their activity, their activity level is affected by their metabolism. That's very cool. Um, I want to kind of start to wrap it up, but I, I loved this question from <laughs> Andrew, and he asked, what does it take to be a zoologist? Um, you have to go to school first, um, study biology or zoology, animal behavior. I have a four-year degree in animal behavior from Furman University. Um, and then also, um, you need to learn the job, which you can mainly do through internships and volunteering. So I highly recommend um, contacting your local zoo and finding out how you can intern. Even if you're younger, um, they may have like a zoo, zoo teen program or something for younger people to get involved. But um, you can't learn all of this through, um, you can't learn all of it through um, books and stuff. A lot of it's on the job experience. So you definitely need a college degree and then also just get, get experience and contact zookeepers. We love to talk to, to kids and um, teenagers that are interested in being a zookeeper. So definitely contact your local zoo. And it's also just another reason to be active on social media because I yes. know there's people out there like you who would love to answer these questions. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you, Lynn, so much. You did a great job, and thank you, Michelle, wherever she went. <laughs> She's probably still She's feeding. over here with Bonnie. I'll turn <laughs> the camera a little. Thanks, Bonnie, Okra May, and Coco. You guys were fantastic. I think Coco may have stole the show a few times. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, and we also continue to get more of your, get your sloth on, I love that phrase, um, yeah, sloth that's awesome. on Animalist and Animal Planet, catch up on all this amazing sloth-filled amazement, and then also to circle up with Animalist and Zoo Atlanta on Google+, Plus. check out slothweek.com, and keep going, go out there and learn more, and check out that pound the kilogram calculator. <laughs> Everyone, have there a great you go. day. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you. Bye. Bye.